unfair to parents of day students under the free senior high school policy. Now, Parents and Farmers Association cautions consumption of moldy maize following severe flooding on farmlands. Also ahead this evening, Ghana Plastic Manufacturers Association calls for a ban on imported plastic flexible products. And in business tonight, customers of gold dealership company Men's Gold besiege East Legon branch to terminate their investment contracts. And on the international front this evening, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, resigns. We've got the details of these stories here on News 360 and much more news. You can also watch us on TV3 Ghana on Twitter, News on TV3 on Facebook. So, as we're also live on DSTV Channel 279. Feel free to join us with your thoughts, your views, your comments and opinions as we get live and interact with our first story this evening. The Peasant Farmers Association has warned that consuming moldy maize perished in the flood waters for close to a month. Paramount Just chief of Naga traditional area, Naba mm, Olandu okay. Awini deterred, lost 180 acres of maize. Tangbang Zato also lost 120 acres and Caesar Ateng more than 80 acres. And they are not alone. Most farmers suffered huge losses due to the floods. The water has receded and the produce now rotten. Yes. Oh. You see. So nothing you can take. Government seem to have done so much in just two years of governance. But for the people here, they say not much has been seen in their lives, especially come to spillage of Bagri dams. They're pleading with government to have water collection systems to save them and their farms. Head of Programs and Advocacy of Peasant Farmers Association, Charles Kowe Inyaba, fears the mold maize, which is dangerous for human consumption, could end up on the market. It's rotten. And then you can see molds and other things developing. And some parts, the maize are even germinating. They can't take anything from here. If they take it, they will take poison. He noted the mold maize is not even wholesome for animal feed. You can use it to feed animals. If you eat that, if you use it to feed animals, the animals will either die. If they don't die and you, the human being, eat, consume the meat of that animal, you can also get aquatoxin. The farmers have incurred huge losses and the member of Peasant Farmers Association is requesting support for them. Now, the Northern Development Forum has appealed to government to expedite processes towards the construction of the Pualugu multi-purpose dam. The forum argued the project, which has been on government's agenda since the year 1964, is key to preventing floods as well as improving agriculture in the northern region. The 2018 Ghana Living Standards Survey revealed the completion of the project and similar medium-sized dams in the northern parts of the country are key solutions to the loss of lives and property during the spillage of the Bagri Dam. At least 34 people have died and thousands of hectares of farmlands including matured rice and maize farms destroyed following severe flooding after the spillage. Chairman of the Northern Development Forum, Major Albert Don Chebe retired, lamented the increasing levels of poverty in the three regions of the north due to what he describes as governmental neglect. We've taken note of the announcement of our brother, the Vice President, in respect of a permanent solution to the flooding in, in the north, which is the construction of the Pualugu Multipurpose Dam. Now, this dam is, 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 is very dear to the hearts of all Northerners because it will do more than just stopping flooding. As we sit now, total irrigation in Ghana is only 20,000 hectares. The Pualugu multipurpose dam will release 210 times. It will increase irrigable land in Ghana 10 times. The firm fears inequitable distribution of infrastructure development across the country could be a threat to peace. If half of a country is not developed, is denied development, I can assure you that the rest of the country will suffer. And you've seen the signs of 
lopsided what lopsided development does everybody up there moves down here buildings are critical to development and for a long time for all these years who has brought up this issue but we have been suffering the consequences the northern development forum was founded in 2007 as a response to the devastating floods in northern ghana which resulted in the death of 22 and the destruction of property well, the Ministry of Sanitation intends to facilitate the conversion of organic waste into manure. Now, the Sector Minister Cecilia Babinadapa made this known during a tour of some refuse dump sites here in Accra. Insanitary conditions are among issues the successive government have been struggling to deal with. Metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies have had to deal with indiscriminate disposal of garbage inadequate and illegal dumping sites, among others. The sector minister, Cecilia Abnadapa, together with her deputies and some metropolitan, municipal and district chief executives, toured some dumping sites in Accra to assess the current situation. They first visited the Mala Market enclave, where city authorities have reclaimed parts of the dump site. The sector minister suggested volumes of plastic waste at the dump site be sorted for recycling before the second phase of the reclamation project commences. This, she said, could provide jobs for the youth. At Glefe in the Dansoma municipality, the dump site had spread to the community as liquid waste gassed into homes. Here, the illegal dump site is manned by miscreants who are also residents. Children are at risk as homes have been sited at the dump site for more than two decades. But authorities said they have plans for the area. The seashore at Uswalata, behind the castle and the Agbogloshi illegal dump site, behind the ICGC Christ Temple, are equally polluted with plastic waste, but remain source of livelihood for many scavengers. Cecilia Ablandapa is confident exploring possibilities from waste generated in the country is a focus of the sector. We should have an organic site where it can turn into compost. And we even are going to clamor for small incinerators in areas that can be used. They are cheaper and then we will make sure they are used for compost. We are going to engage our scientists, CSIR, tech engineers, to make sure we fashion out a solution to some of these problems. Mayor of Accra, Mohamed Ni Ajaisoa, said the AMA is focusing on six thematic areas in managing waste in the metropolis. This place is choked all the time, but you come here and you've seen some significant progress. It doesn't mean that we've gotten there. I mean, I'll, I'll be the last person to say that uh, we've gotten there. But we've made significant progress. I have said it several times that in dealing with the, the cleanliness of Accra, environmental sanitation, there are six clear areas that we talk about. Solid waste, liquid waste, our drains maintenance, our cemeteries, our weeding and landscaping of Accra, and the control of pests and pets. So that's a very worrying development there in view of the fact that Accra is set to be the cleanest city in Africa by the year 2020. We'll be following up on that. Meanwhile, the Ghana Plastic Manufacturers Association has called for the ban on all imported plastic flexible products. President of the association, Ebo Boutre, at a stakeholders forum in Accra noted about 62% of plastic flexibles on the market are imported and not OXO biodegradable compliant. According to the president of the Ghana Plastic Manufacturers Association, Ebo Boche, its members complied with a directive from the Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation Ministry in 2015 to use oxobiodegradable additive in the manufacturing process. Government should quickly do the right thing, the right thing, by banning all imported plastic flexible products which are not oxo bio compliant if you bring in plastic flexibles which is not oxo compliant you cannot bring in here at right at the port it should be seized and destroyed he however bemoaned the influx of imported plastics which he said is impacting negatively on local production the quantity of chinese imports are increasing by the day more chinese nationals are setting up just warehouses and importing finished plastic products for retailing. 
So it makes the imported plastic bags, films and sheets so very cheap that it makes it impossible for local manufacturers to compete. Senior Revenue Officer Roger Gardiner said the Ghana Revenue Authority Customs Division is procuring gadgets that will enable them to identify various forms of plastics that contain the additive. With the master batches, the OBDs, the um, oxobiodegradable additives to the plastics, okay, some of them come in and they are misclassified. All right, it gives us the difficulty or, or makes it's very difficult to classify it and like levy the correct duty. So sometimes they wrongly classify because they want to somehow divert or like reduce their, their, their cost, see, on, on various taxes. Chief Program Officer of Environmental Protection Agency, Godson Vuado, underscored the need for a national plastic management policy. Well, let's get into education now. You plan, you make sure resources are available before you start implementing any policy. Now, these were the words of an educationist, Professor John Aheto, at the Media General Forum on the first year of free SHS program implementation. There are some of us who have been here old enough to know how things are done, properly done. You plan... You make sure resources are available before you start implementing anything. Education, free education, you either have to be out of your mind to oppose it, or you don't come from a village to know. You'll be surprised. 100 cities for application fee. That's the reason why some people don't get it further in education. There may be something wrong with the implementation and the timing of the implementation and the scale of the implementation. Defer this for one year. Take our time and actually get out of electionary mode and look at national mode and have a lot of consultations. The deputy speaker asked for the mic and said, quote, the president is in a hurry. Professor John Kobla Aheto noted the quality of education has been compromised. The one thing wrong with the way we are implementing this free SHS is the fact that quality is not factor at all. I, John Aheto, my issue about education for 50 years is quality education, full stop. A headmaster went to a meeting with the minister and he raised his hand and said, aggregate 44, isn't that too high? This is what the minister said, you can quote me. If there were no Agri 44 in your school, village school, will you have any students? No, Mau. <laughs> Our Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, Professor George Toku Ojuro, has described government as being unfair to parents whose wards are day students under the free senior high school policy. He was contributing to Media General's public forum on the first year of the free SHS program implementation. According to the Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, one year of free SHS has been successful in terms of access and expansion, but not on quality and equity. The equity and quality components of the free SHS policy remains challenging. In a 2018 communique issued by the Upper Presbytery of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, after its eighth presbytery session held in the Garo district of the Upper East region, for example, the church called on the government to address challenges such as accommodation, furniture, inadequate classrooms, and delay in the release of funds for feeding associated with the free SHS to ensure quality education. He said government in implementing the policy has been unfair to some parents. For me, it is unfair that both students in boarding and those in day schools should benefit from free SHS at different levels of cost. When parents of both day and boarding school students pay taxes, this does not assure equity. Kenya, which has been the key reference point, for justifying the free SHS implementation, never extended free education to boarding schools. 
neither did they adopt the double track system. Kenya's was a free day secondary education program. Cost of boarding is borne by parents. He suggested the exemption of some schools to sustain the program. Exempt class A schools, schools like Achimota, Wesley Girls, I, I, I find it difficult to answer why they should and block benefit from free SHS. The free should be extended to only children in those schools who have been identified um, as coming from poor backgrounds who cannot genuinely pay fees. Well, away from the Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, Professor George uh, Toko Dro, let's get into a citizen report for tonight on MTN Video Report. Kofi Adamo reports on the poor state of the Nyakrum SDA Basic School Block in the Agoda West District of the Central Region. This is Nyakrum SDA Basic School in the Agona West Municipality of the Central Region. And this is the KG block. And this is where the KG people have been learning. As a result of this, many of the parents are taking their children out of this school. This is also the, the, the JHS block. Anytime it rains, lessons in the classrooms must stop. And this is the chalkboard that the teachers have been using to teach the students. This is where the teachers have been sitting. So this is your citizen journalist from Aguna Yakrum in the Aguna West Municipality of the Central Region of Ghana. You can also send your video report to WhatsApp number 055-1433-044. That's 055-1433-044. This is Ravi on News 360. We'll be back with an update on men's gold and the customers seeking to get through with their investments, their business. Marcus Yosari comes up next. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Business Report on News 360. My name is Park Yassar. We begin uh, with happenings on the financial front where customers of gold dealership company Men's Gold were at the East Legon branch to terminate their investment contract. While the company in a statement on Monday noted that customers who wanted to terminate their investment transactions will receive the full principal invested within 90 days. However, the offices of the branch were closed, leaving security men present to assist with the exercise. Customers who did not want to appear on camera shared their frustrations. They were not convinced the company will follow through with its promise, particularly when old schedules had not been met. Away from men's gold, finance expert and lecturer at the University of Birmingham Business School, Dr. Sajid Shudri, has cautioned the Bank of Ghana against further writing off of bad debt if commercial banks don't institute measures to control them or the rate of non-performing loans in the sector. He said this while commenting on the decision by the central bank to approve a loan write-off to reduce non-performing loans. The Bank of Ghana approved a loan write-off of 1.2 billion Ghana cities to reduce the non-performing loans choking the banking industry as part of efforts to sanitize the sector and restore investor confidence. While commending the central bank for this move, finance expert and lecturer at the University of Birmingham Business School, Dr. Sajid Chaudhry, requested commercial banks to institute measures to control non-performing loans. Always good to clean up the balance sheet of banks, so I think uh, this is a good step. Uh, and uh, if you, I take only these big six banks, uh, the profit before tax of these, these, only these big six ones is about 2 billion CDs. So if you write off all the, the bad debts, uh, you are still left with profit. So at least for this particular year, I don't really, you know, say that, okay, you should tax the profit. So mm. this year, probably they will not be uh, in profit or 
uh, some of them will be in loss and then of course you can get a tax rebate on that uh, I think this is a good step uh, they should do it um, it will uh, uh, somehow give some psychological support to banks to make a fresh start uh, and try to be more prudent do proper due diligence uh, do proper monitoring uh, while giving the loan Dr. Chaudhry said measures and acquisitions are expected as banks are required to hold more capital as Ghana moves towards a risk-based minimum regulatory capital regime. The capital requirement, they are meeting the requirement. Uh, the regulatory capital ratio is also beyond the requirement. Uh, most of the big ones, they are fine. Uh, so perhaps there will be more uh, mergers, acquisitions going forward, especially the ones... Uh, which are uh, not able to meet the requirements. There are other ways of raising the equity uh, as well, uh, but perhaps the, the easiest one, uh, they can, of course, uh, invite uh, investors to, to put in more money. Uh, but you can expect uh, a few more mergers and acquisitions going forward. Coming yeah. In other news, Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry Robert Ahumkat Lindsay says government will deliver on its commitment on the One District One Factory by 2020, addressing the 42nd annual delegate. Uh, I beg your pardon, addressing the 42nd annual general meeting of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Accra. He noted 25 billion cities has so far been committed to the initiative. In other news, uh, Cabinet has given approval for public institutions, ministries and digital assemblies to convert to the use of solar energy. The Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, made this known at the opening of the fourth Ghana Renewable Energy Fair in Accra. The Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Baumia, underscored the importance of renewable energy to the country's energy mix. He said cabinet has approved the use of solar energy by public institutions to reduce costs. Feasibility studies for the Jubilee House and House of Parliament are already underway and we want to move this um, to all MDAs, to hospitals, to schools, police stations and so on. We've got to move towards solar energy by government uh, as a matter of priority. The Vice President directed the Ghana Irrigation Authority to consider using solar energy for its operations. Urge the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority to seriously consider the use of cost-effective utility-scale renewable energy technologies in their irrigation schemes for areas that are remote from the national grid. He touched the Energy Commission to promote cost-effective energy generation. Deputy Minister of Energy Oriyeku Edu said the use of solar energy by district assemblies could create jobs. Creation of employment, two, the promotion of local businesses in the electricity supply market, three, the promotion of local capacity in manufacturing of electrical and renewable energy products. The event was on the theme Renewable Energy, Exploiting Energy Resources at the District Level. That's all by way of business. Thanks for watching. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. My name is Parkus Yasari. Over to you, Alfred. Thank you, Parkus. So this is now government has given financial clearance for the recruitment of some 145,000 job seekers for the public sector. Information Minister Designate Kojo Pongkrumah, who made this known at the media briefing here in Accra, said the move forms part of efforts at tackling unemployment in the country. Information Minister Designate Kojo Pon Kruma disclosed that all 145,000 job seekers are expected to be at post by the end of this year. Financial clearance has been given for 145,000 jobs. Then you go through the recruitment process. And the important thing is that by the end of this year, these persons are supposed to be at post because they have been provided for and they have been cleared to be recruited this year. He gave the breakdown of the sectors where the jobs are expected to be created including the Nation Builders Corps. That includes 24,000 health workers, education space alone, about 9,500 educational workers, 4,000 police recruits, 3,500 other security personnel, 2,700 agric extension workers, 1,049 local government workers, 
20,000 afforestation workers, and then as I mentioned, 100,000 for NAPCO, out of which about 90,000 have already accepted their postings. On the one district, one factory policy, the information minister designated hinted 18 factories have been accredited, with 50 more to receive accreditation by the end of the year. Leaf found companies in Greater Accra, in Ashanti you have uh, Spring and Bolt Company Limited, um, in the Kumasi Metropolis, in the Bosumche Metropolis you have Vesta Oil Processing Company, Equipim Gold, that's an agribusiness company, in the Eastern Region as well, Zural Carbon Products and Palm Pharmaceuticals. So um, it's not all limited to the Greater Accra Region. For about 18 accredited so far, we expect um, to do about 50 more before the end of the year and that should bring us to about 70. He said 10 financial institutions have committed 4.5 billion CDs to the program under which some 216 factories will be set up through public-private partnership across the country. For Ghana Commercial Bank about a billion Ghana CDs, Universal Merchant Bank about 440 million Ghana CDs, the United Bank for Africa about 880 million Ghana CDs, ADB about 200 million Ghana CDs, Exim Bank about 1.7 billion Ghana CDs, Echo Bank about 150 million Ghana CDs. And stay with us here on News 360 for the latest of sports news with Nana Kojwa Fresh shortly. Good evening. Welcome back to News 360 here on TV3. My name is Anako Jaffre with the sports update. And the merry-go-round um, relating to Ghana's 2019 AFCON qualifier against Sierra Leone continues after FIFA rejected the Sierra Leonean Football Association's appeal to provisionally lift the ban of the lift the ban on the country to enable them play Ghana this week, insisting the elected officers must be reinstated before the ban is lifted. The ban was imposed after the country's anti-corruption commission, ACC, banned two leading um, officials, the president, Aisha, Aisha Johnson, and then general secretary, Christopher Kamara from the governing body's offices. The World Football Governing Body insists the failure to reinstate both President Aisha Johansson and General Secretary Christopher Kamara by the deadline will result in the Leon Stars not being able to play the game against the Black Stars on Thursday in Kumasi. And despite the latest setback relating to Ghana's 2019 AFCON qualifier, the team went ahead to train earlier today at the Bayara Sports Stadium in Kumasi. Kwesi Apia trained with 90% of his collapse. 19 players reported for training. And PRO of the Normalization Committee, Dan Kweku Yabua, threw more light on the team's preparation so far whilst awaiting FIFA's official and final decision on the Sierra Leonean Football Association. In so many months, you could see attendance at training has improved tremendously. It tells you that the spirit of Ghanaians is getting back to support the team. And we're hoping that it will translate into performance, God willing, Thursday. So we beat the Israelians and beat them well. The last time we monitored, um, a communique had been sent to FIFA from Sierra Leone. Um, the party from government and the old FA officials have agreed that the match should be played in principle. So they wrote to FIFA seeking that the suspension will be lifted. But FIFA has written back that the old FA administrators should take full charge. The letter sent should be signed by them. Um, if the situation is rectified, the suspension will be lifted and God willing on Thursday we'll have the match. We will still continue to follow that developing story and Deportivo Alaves midfielder Mubarak Wakaso says he is okay and fit to play for the Black Stars in Kumase after his car accident on Sunday. The player who arrived in Accra on Monday evening wants the media to stop talking about the accident and rather focus their attention on the Stars' preparations for the double header against Sierra Leone. I'm okay. And I need to. We, need, we just need to give thanks to to God for for saving me from such um, incident. And me, I just want. I just want to plead on you people that I want to forget about it and and think ahead. Like always, uh, the job I've been doing for the nation is the same job I'm here to do, or maybe I'll even do better than what I was doing before. So uh, we just need. Um, 
we just need you guys, uh, yeah, your support, like like you have been doing for us. Without you guys, we are we are nothing. So we are still expecting to to see your prayers and your support. Let's do some more sports news here where Conor McGregor has been suspended for a month on medical grounds after his UFC 229 defeat to Khabib. McGregor was beaten in Las Vegas when he tapped out in the fourth round following um, Khabib's administering a rare naked choke. Nevada State Athletic Commission sanctioned the bout and confirmed McGregor was suspended from fighting until November 6th with no contact until the 28th of October. Medical suspensions are routine in UFC. And that's all the sports on News 360. My name is Anako Jaffrey. Thanks very much for watching. Always a pleasure serving you. Good evening. Hello, good evening. It's now time for some entertainment news with me, Nana Kwejrado. Now, moving on to the very first story for tonight. The CEO of Rough Town Records, Nana Jaman, popularly known in showbiz circles as Bullet, uh, seems to have found a perfect replacement for Ebony Reigns. Now, in a viral video on social media, Ebony's lookalike Tisha was seen with Bullet singing to Wendy Shays, some 35. Why you want me to Finding a replacement for the late dancehall queen diva Ebony Reigns has been high on the agenda for Rough Town Records. Several ladies popped up with a striking resemblance to the late dancehall queen. Video gone viral, the former manager of the late Ebony Reigns was seen singing together with a lady named Tisha. <laughs> this has sparked rumors that he's going to sign her onto his record label. <laughs> So as to whether she's going to be a perfect replacement, we are yet to find out. I'm moving on to the next story. The Ghanaian rapper Ochiame Kwame in his latest Made in Ghana song has put High Life ahead of hip-hop music. The choice of High Life over hip-hop by Ochiame Kwame clearly shows he has totally diverted from his hip-hop roots. In the song, he sings Banku over fried rice anytime, Fufu over pizza anytime, Kente over linen. Rating High Life over hip-hop, Ochiame weighs in on the recent campaign to play about 80% of Ghanaian music, which is believed to be Ghana's pride. In an interview with Ochiame Kwame, he explained that he was not condemning hip-hop, but his highlighting, uh, he's just highlighting the fact that High Life is a true Ghanaian music genre. Ochiame Kwame's Made in Ghana song is part of the big project to promote Ghanaian culture and heritage through music and tourism. So Chiamme Kwame and his family there, and I wish him all the best in the uh, new album that he has. Handing over now to Alfred and Natalie. Certainly. Made in Ghana, there. Oh, it yes. is good. It's just very good. We have to sell <laughs> Ghana, eat Ghana, wear Ghana, Ghana. Yeah. sing Ghana too. Everything. You know, not so much about the killing willing. You know, in Ghana, the songs, you're either singing about food, girls, you know. And it's not just in Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> it's everywhere. It is everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. everywhere. It's, everywhere. <laughs> about food. it's everywhere. Anyway, but I um, want to say thank you. It's been amazing uh, spending your 60 minutes with us here on News 360. Before we go, let's take a quick recap of some of the stories that made headlines tonight. Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, Professor George Odro, accuses government of being unfair to parents of day students under the free senior high school policy. Peasant Farmers Association cautions against consumption of mouldy maize following severe flooding on farmlands.
Ghana Plastic Manufacturers Association calls for a ban on imported plastic flexible products. Customers of gold dealership company Men's Gold besiege is Ligon branch to terminate their investment contracts. And on the international front, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley resigns. Remember, you can get some more news on our website. It's 3news.com. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Natalie Ford. My name is Alfred Okansi. Do have a good evening.